Well, this month, Bangladesh ratified the Hong Kong Convention for the Safe and Sustainable Recycling of Ships. It's big business in Bangladesh, but rights organizations have long voiced concerns about dangerous conditions for workers as well as environmental damage. Tanvir Chowdhury reports from Sitakunda, near the Bay of Bengal. Bangladesh is one of the world's biggest hubs for ship recycling. After vessels are decommissioned, they're broken down and the parts are repurposed. Guidelines from the International Maritime Organization, known as the Hong Kong Convention, include ways of limiting risk to human health and safety and to the environment. Some recycling yards are already complying with the convention. Within next two years, all the yards in Bangladesh will reach the Hong Kong Convention level. And it will be a strong message to the world that send your vessels to Bangladesh and it will be responsibly recycled. Bangladesh's cheap labor makes it a popular destination for ships at the end of their operational lives. The sector generates substantial income, an estimated $2 billion in 2022, and creates many jobs. With the boom in construction, there is an increase in demand for iron and steel. And the scrap metal from these dismantled ships are one of the main sources. But according to the International Labor Organization, the industry is among the most dangerous in the world with high fatality rates, injuries, and workplace-related diseases. Some employees we spoke to are unhappy, but didn't want it to be identified for fear of repercussions. It'd be good if we could have proper safety gear and a clean working environment. Then there'd be less chance of any accidents happening. Working conditions are better than before, but workers are treated badly. We don't get a decent wage or proper health care compensation for all the hard labor. Advocacy groups are lobbying for improved working conditions. We really appreciate Bangladesh government has approved the Hong Kong Convention. We also appreciate some of the progressive owners develop their yard as green yard. But the concern is there are many yards who are not following the convention. The International Labour Organization says employees need union representation to protect their rights and workplace safety committees to ensure they have the power to refuse dangerous jobs. Tanvi Chaudhry, Al Jazeera, Shitakunda, Bangladesh. Let's now speak to Sayyida Rizwana Hassan, who's a lawyer of the Bangladesh Supreme Court. With more than 20 years' experience, she advocates for environmental protection. Joining us live from Dhaka, welcome to uh, Al Jazeera. So as we heard in Tanvir's package, while reaping economic benefits for the country, uh, there are still significant environmental concerns as well as concerns when it comes to workplace-related issues. So in your opinion, how much progress has been made in addressing these concerns? Um, thank you very much. I don't think much progress has been made. I think um, the efforts that we see are largely artificial, and the efforts have been taken to impress upon the global community. Look, there, in some years there have been development, so we are now a safe hub. I can give you just one statistic. Within the first six months of this year, when import of sheep has actually slowed down in Bangladesh because of the economic recession, we have already lost three lives. And I am dealing with 40 workers who we suspect have got asbestos disease. So I don't think general improvement has taken place. I think some years have taken some improvement measures, which I would consider seriously artificial. Right. The reason is all taking years that we have in Bangladesh are on the beaches. Okay, let me ask you this then. In your opinion, what will it take for the sector to remain competitive yet environmentally sustainable and safe for workers? For it to be environmentally sustainable, labor safe, and at the same time to be economically viable, I think every player involved in the sector has to be very honest. It's an international trade. So the sheep owners have to be honest. The exporting country has to be honest in providing the inventory of hazardous material. The importing country has to be honest in ensuring that it does not import vessel when it does not have an environmental sound management. We have to ensure that the cash buyers are accountable. One has to understand the very simple fact that if national laws do not work, international law will also not work because the monitoring mechanism in international law is much weaker than the monitoring mechanism in national laws. That's and what I wanted to ask you about, in fact. What sort of monitoring mechanisms are there in place to see 
uh, whether compliance uh, is being achieved? I would say that the shipbreaking industry as it is operating now, it's a classic case of global corruption and global hypocrisy. So I, I don't see any monitoring mechanism here in Bangladesh. And the monitoring mechanism that the Hong Kong Convention prescribes, it basically puts the fox in charge of the chicken. So I don't think any significant uh, improvement will take place. It will only be covering up the illegalities, the beaching method, the flag of convenience, and the weaknesses in the downstream uh, waste management with some green certificate. I'm not very hopeful. Okay, we'll have to leave it there. We thank you so much for joining us from Dhaka.